Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. <clears throat> you can pick up back to the, to the chapter. Even from the days of your fathers, Malachi 1.1, 1, 1, we're talking about Israel. You're going away from my ordinances. That's the law. And I've not kept them. So when you got a church that runs a verse 8 and doesn't read the context of 6, 7, what you do is when you pull a verse out of the Bible, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. All right, jump off the Empire State Building, hit the street, get run over by a bus and a couple of yellow calves, and get up and go about your business. What, 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 uh, uh, what? Uh. And, you know, you get some Christians, oh, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And, you know, we can't go midweek because we got ballet. And we can't go, you know, the Sunday night because, you know, there, there's the ball game. And Really? You can't pull a scripture out. But then again, scripture can apply three ways. Doctrinally. Doctrinally, this is Israel. This is the priest. Under the law. Spiritual. When you take a scripture and you preach and you teach it. But you can't do this for the church. Well, we'll, we'll keep on reading. And we did yesterday. Because it's all out of context from the church. And then historic. This is historical. Return unto me, repent, and I will return unto you. See, you can't you can't quote that to a in a Christian Baptist church. Because if you quote that in a if you quote verse eight without verse seven in the Baptist church, they will say well, doesn't the Bible say I'll never leave thee or forsake thee? Once saved, always saved. See, the slick pastor that goes to verse 8 will completely eliminate verse 7. And you will never hear him go to the book of Malachi in the Bible study. Or he'll do it lightning fast. Say, the Lord host, but ye say, wherein shall we return? Well, you notice God doesn't answer that. Because the answer is obvious. Get back to the law. The prophets have already told you. We move to a new question. Will a man rob God? Okay? And now we'll be quoting your Baptist church. And now let's look at the context again. In, in John chapter 10, Jesus gives us two, two things. He gives us a thief and a robber. Scripture with scripture. What's a thief? A thief or a theft is you... You leave your house, you go somewhere, you come out, you come home, and you find that a house has been broken into, and someone's taking something. You got your desk at work, you leave your desk, you come back, and something's been stolen. A thief is somebody who takes something to you. A pickpocket is a thief. You didn't even know they did it. Now, a robber is a person or event that's taken by force or violence. So, if you're going to apply verse 8 to Christians in a church building that you're not tithing to the Lord, how by violence or by force did they steal from God? Yet ye have robbed me. It's God speaking. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings.
there is some kind of force or violence because God, who's already used the two words in John chapter 10, he would have said, where have you theft? Where have you been a thief? And I don't know what the con I don't know what the answer is to it. Verse 9. Ye are cursed with a curse. By the way, that tithes and offerings we looked at yesterday. Nowhere do we find anything about money. And when we come over here to Webster. We ask Mr. Webster. Watch this. A tenth part of anything. A tenth part increase annually, annually, arising from the profits of land and stock. Tithes personal, predial, mixed, personal, occurring with labor, trade, navigation, predial, as Oh, issuing from the earth as hay, wood, fruit, mixed, occurring from beasts, which are fed from the ground. So even Webster's 1828 dictionary gives us what the Bible says. But I guarantee the, the few Baptist churches I've been in where they had their monthly, you know, faith giving and the, the preaching of the tithes and all. He's not talking about fruit or lambs. It says, ye are cursed with a curse. A Christian can never be cursed. A Christian can be chastening but never cursed. A Jew, by God, can be cursed that it, to a point if there are sins I've, I've taught you, uh, cut off. Well, you die and go to hell. There is no sin that a Christian can do where he will lose his salvation. Now, he may lose rewards, crowns, inheritance. But he will never end up in hell. For ye have robbed me. Again, that robbing is taken by force or violence. I don't know what the context can be for tithes and offering by violence. Or by force. But that's the definition of robbing. Bring ye the all the tithe. All the tithe. Not just George Washington, Benjamin Franklin's, which are not even the context that we looked at. <coughs> Into the storehouse. We went to, we've been through every chapter from Genesis. That storehouse is connected with the temple. The temple had off buildings, off areas, all kinds of different activities and storage. You better not have a church where there's a storehouse. You got a pastor who's got storage of all kinds of things. I know. Old cars. And Friend, that's idolatry. That there may be meat. Food. In my house. Now, unlike the church gathering in the New Testament, 
the tithes and the offerings in the Old Testament were, were put into store for the Levites to survive and live. And one of the things was oil. You would have a place for the oil because the oil would be used not only for the Levites, but use, they would have the oil for the candles. But that house, again, we're in the Old Testament. That's not the church house. That's the temple. And I've seen today on Facebook, too, that, uh, I was glad when they said, I, I can never quote that word, let us go into the house of the Lord. And, you know, they, they, they want it to be their church house. That's not so. And that you miss the complete house that in the, in the book of Acts, they went from house to house to house. They didn't have a central building. And if you're going to have that concept in Acts chapter uh, 1631, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thy house. Oh, what, the building gets saved? And I'm going to tell you, I know some Christians, they believe in the rapture, and I believe they believe at the rapture, their wonderful church building is going to be raptured with them. And the grass, and the pews. And I've heard many prayers in a Baptist church all over. And Lord, we want to thank you for being in your house. That's not the Lord's house. And in this day and age of the Laodicean church age, with scripture, Revelation chapter 3, the only place the church is spoken of as a building, per se, Jesus Christ is standing outside, knocking. And Lord, we want to thank you for this house. And, and then the Bible says about this church, oh, we think we're rich, we think we're great, we have need of nothing. Oh, really? Then what do you preach in one month, one week on... Malachi chapter 3 to get your people to tithe more. Now I'm going to tell you what I believe. What I believe. I believe that that preacher, that pastor has looked into the church books and he's getting scared that things are not going to get paid. It's funny how it is wrong for a Christian to go get a mortgage or a loan. And yet the church can get a, and I know this one, they can get a mortgage for the property to buy the property. And then they can go get funds from outside sources for a steeple and pews. And then we can take up a collection and get another loan to build a fellowship hall, but we don't have anybody in our church. And that you've gotten all these loans and all these mortgages and all these bills. And if you don't get up and preach for the people start giving money, pretty much it's at least the pastor's name is on those bills. <laughs> And a lot of times it, they get scared because maybe the Lord wasn't into that mortgage program. Now, let's read on. There may be meat in my house and prove me now wherewith. James says, are we not, we're not to tempt the Lord. New Testament. Don't we as Christians, have we not Christians on this side of Calvary through Jesus Christ, have we not received all that we... We have, uh, not we, but the, the Christians have some nerve to say, God, we need a big fancy building this and all that. The early church didn't have big fancy buildings. There are people in third world, you know, those w wicked 
terrible third world nations, according to America. And they are. But I'm saying, what I'm saying is America, our big fancy churches and all that, and we look at down these third world nations, there are people in these third world nations. They cannot meet in one place frequently. They cannot even meet in one place weekly without having the government police, the government authorities to find. It's called an underground church. They've got to move all around. And there are nations that don't even have a Bible in their language. And how dare us, glad to see an American Christian, we can have whatever Bible and whatever version we want. And we have the nerve to say that our church building, I can give you the, the, they believe that their church building is the house of God. Where they're taking the house of God out of context. There are even Baptists, well-known men in church history, they have called their church the temple. With no regard to what Paul says about the Christian today, the temple is your body, not the building. How do you do that one? How do you name your church temple? Paul says the body is the temple. Let's look, let's, let's look on now. Saith the Lord of hosts. If I, God, will not open you the windows of heaven, we don't have time. But you remember a certain man named Noah? That when he built his ark in the Middle East, not in America. That when he finished that ark and finished many years preaching. That when God told him and his, his wife and his sons and their wife, come into the ark with me and shut the door. That there were windows of heaven open and it rained the first time. And, and the earth was flooded. All over. The entire earth was flooded. And then there was a prophet and a king when there was famine in the land. And the purpain the, the verse is, shall not the Lord open the windows of heaven? And the, and the guy said, no, nah, God can't do that. He said, well, brother, you know what? You're going to see it, but you're not going to taste it. And when he found out, the whole entire city trampled him in the gate. So we have one place where it's raining. We have one place where an army took off and there's a the food. Malachi 3.10, when you say to your church, the windows of heaven, Scripture says that God says, I'll let it rain. And then you're getting, as far as the land of Israel, not the church, not America, you are getting to the early and latter rain, which came at the proper time for the harvesting in Israel of the food and the crops. And this would also take us to a millennial passage coming out of the tribulation period where there's been no rain. And evidently, in the tribulation period, the word rob, taken by violence, taken by force, Maybe people have gone to the temple and brought their offerings and their tithing and there are Jews that went there and stole it by force, Eli's sons. Because except you, you receive the mark, you can't buy or sell. That might be the only way you're going to eat. At the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus comes, there will be the early and latter rain together we have studied to water the earth and to bring the, the uncursed 
world as it was in Adam and Eve. And the blessing is not that God's going to give you a Lincoln Continental and God's going to give you a house and God ain't going to give you everything you want and everything you need. And every no, it's for the nation of Israel, Malachi 1.1, 1, 1, I will give you the early and latter rain. Your crops will be to the fullest. If not, the heavens over you will be as brass and as iron the ground. You won't have any crops. And what happens when you got the crops? Scripture with scripture, what we studied last, last night. Your crops will grow, won't they? What do you do with those crops? You bring 10% of those crops in. 90% in yours. God will bless you and get that rain again. You're going to get more crops. The seventh year, you don't eat. You, you don't plant off the land. You don't harvest the land. you got the seven-year rest of the land. God said the sixth year will provide for three years. Because at the, at the, at the eighth year... Then you start sowing the land and all that. You're going to say, well, we're going to eat in the, in the eighth year. You're going to eat from the sixth year, two and three, like the, like the weekly Sabbath. That's not church age. And you're going to tell me the Apostle Paul, as well as he is, you're going to tell me he didn't give, when he wrote and we looked at it in Corinthians, oh, you're to give you a cheerful giver and all that. And at the end of his life, he didn't have a house. The book of Romans said he had his own higher house. And at the end of his life, in 2 Timothy, he tells Timothy, bring me my parchments and a, a couple books. That's the only thing he had at the end of his life. And that when you preach Malachi chapter 3, if you give your tithes and all that, God's going to bless you. My, and I've heard people, my business has been great and this and all that. Because of the time. Oh, you didn't pray for it? You didn't ask, you see, you override praying. God didn't answer the prayer. He answered you giving a time. That's works. So open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. Run back to the storehouse in verse 10. That's oil, that's olives, that's grapes, that's wheat, that's, that's everything that's in the land of Israel. Okay? I know plenty of Christians, they, they plant a garden. Is <laughs> I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And if we're coming out of the trib if we are coming out of the tribulation period, that'd be anybody with, with the mark. That could be the Antichrist. If we're coming out of the Old Testament Malachi, that there are just some people, you know what? They just take, take, take. And they use it for their own glory and selfish means and they don't give any to the priest. There was a prophet, I forget which one we, we, we read and studied. They didn't bring their tithes. They didn't bring to the, to the temple. And what happened was the, the Levites couldn't survive on the temple. They left the temple and they went out getting jobs. And God rebuked the nation through the prophets and said, Hey! That ain't right. And you know what? Oh, you had the crops, but you didn't have enough to eat. You brought home the money, but when you came home, your pockets had a hole in it. You did not take care of, I forget your prophet is, you did not take care of my Levites. I am not taking care of you. You find out who that prophet is, and then you match it with that Malachi. We've got two Old Testament books, not for the church. Paul said there were times that he, not only did he fast, which he did, 
But he said, there were times I was hungry. There were times I was thirsty. What, you didn't give your tithes that week, Paul? You didn't pay your tithes that month? No. All they that live Christ, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You got to rightly divide the scriptures. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Israel's soul primarily is a piece of land. Neither shall your vine, that's grapes, cast their fruit before the time in the field. If you give to my Levites, and it's not really what well, you're giving to God, but if you, if my Levites are satisfied with food and oil, their necessities, then I, God, will be pleased with you because the Levites are taken care of. And if you take care of my Levites, I will take care of you. Say the Lord of hosts. So again, we're looking at a piece of land. Now, verse 9, before we move on, ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. That whole nation, let's go back to chapter 1. I want you to read this one. Chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the Lord, word of the Lord to Israel. That's the nation. Chapter 3. Okay? The church is never called a nation. The church is never called sheep. Now, seeing that nation, look at verse 12. All nations, there's the Gentiles, shall call you blessed. That's definitely millennial. And that's also Old Testament. That's what the Queen of Sheba, when she came to see Solomon. Oh, man, your God is wonderful. All right, the church taking on the life of the apostles and Jesus. According to what, what the church preaches today about tithing, giving, and all that, Paul was an utter failure. He didn't get... The blessings of heaven. Even Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, was a failure. According to the face promise. According to the, 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 the uh, uh, prosperity gospel. You say, what, what do you mean by that? All right, there are churches, there are Christians today, they got businesses, they got cars, they got houses, they got all this stuff because they tithe. Jesus Christ, when he died, had five pieces of raiment, and that was it. Paul has some books and parchments. That's it. I don't think Peter... Had too much. Peter was the kind. Peter, this is his character. No, he, I think Peter would have enough for his wife, his family. I don't think Peter would have grabbed excessive when he was hung upside down because he didn't want to die like Christ did. And I think if we were to look at the apostles and the early church, and you can find somebody, listen. 
if you read the early church history, which is completely lacking today in the church, if your entire life suggests to be that you were tied to a faggot and burned to death, if Groton, Groton Connecticut, if everything you own was brought to the to the town green and auctioned off by the by the, 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 the big white church because you did not give tithes and taxes to that church that when you walked away from that green the only thing you owned anymore was primary was stripes on your back that your land and your animals were confiscated. Then according to bring your tithes and God will bless you and wonderful great things, Paul and Jesus and Christians in church history were utter failures. But when you, when you say something like that, you got to remember Paul and Peter they had gold and silver and precious stones and glory, not here and here. And then when you go about preaching about tithing in the storehouses and, and God opened the blessing, you got your eyes on the world. But Revelation chapter 3, now you're contradicting yourself. You see, when you go to that one verse, you contradict the Bible. If you contradict the Bible, you're wrong. God's not the author, the author of confusion. Unto the angel of the church of the scenes right. These things say the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning, the creation of God. I know thy work. So that's great. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or, or hot. So that because thou lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Okay, here we go. This is the scene church age. Because thou sayest I'm rich. Isn't that what they promise when they say this faith promise? Uh, I think, I'm trying to think what this one church. Try the Lord, try the patience, something like, try the tithe, something like that. I forget what it's called. Prove the tithe. And when you prove the tithe, we'll even have a guy get up and, and people get up and say the great testimony of their tithing, how rich they are. See that? I'm rich. I am increased with good. Oh, the great blessings God showed me. Remember, Jesus had five articles of clothes. Paul had parchments and books and a rented house. And have need of nothing. Well, what are you doing preaching about tithing? Oh, I want the church to get a blessing. No, I personally think that you've been looking at your, your the church books and you're falling short. I think when 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 they, I think I think I think I think I think me I think I could be wrong. I think the moment when the pastor gets up and starts preaching about tithing, I think the church should call, all right, let's check the books. Let's call for a church audit of the books. I know one church, they had, every year, I have assume around tax time, but I could be wrong because I know I've been in that church. But I know every year they have a, a, a accountant go through the entire record, just make sure that everything was done right and proper. I, I guarantee that man does not go any time to preach tithing. And have need of nothing. That's what they promise you when you go to Malachi chapter 3 and hear that message. And knowest not that thou art wretched, Miserable, poor, blind, and naked. These are going to be the Christians that, oh, yeah, you know, I, I talk, because, see, my pastor's making me tithe, and we learned that last night. That's not what God says. And when we set our eyes to the world and not to the heavenly thing, 
Jesus said, set thy treasures in heaven. There's a lot of things you can give to God that, yes, out of your paycheck, but there are other things you can give to God that, that you can benefit. Your time, yourself. But the most dangerous thing is when you run to, the, to these try to tithes and, and faith giving and all, and, and you run to an Old Testament book. Because you cannot find in the New Testament what you want to preach to demand them to tithe, to demand them to give, when Paul says, not a necessary, but God loves a cheerful giver.